Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodson and in today's Lightroom tutorial, that's right, Lightroom tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to edit photos like Brandon Wofel, very famous Instagram photographer. He's got, a, I guess, a cool style. I can't argue with the, the millions of people that follow him. Uh, not necessarily my style, but he has some really amazing pictures nonetheless, like really, really good stuff. Um, so... You can check out his stuff. I'll have a link down to his uh, Instagram if you haven't seen his stuff down in the bio. And we're going to take a look how, at how to create a, an image style like him in Lightroom today. So let's jump in and get started right now. Okay, so this whole thing, I want to kick it off in Photoshop first because I want to examine Brandon's style. You got his Instagram handle right here, Brandon Woeful. Give him a follow if you haven't already. Uh, so he's got some really, really cool images. I mean, just really creative ideas, very clever usage of foreground bow. Uh, just what he does here with the greens is magical. Neon is always cool. This photo is just like, come on, are you kidding me? The contrast, the color from foreground to background and the the, mo the, the, the uh, posing and the positioning of them in the frame and the ship is just in the right spot and the color and post-production, everything just comes together perfectly. Uh, so this is uh, just a, a, a spattering of images from his Instagram that I gathered. And I just jotted down a couple notes that jumped out at me. Number one, colorful. We got pinks, we got blues, we got yellows, we got cyan, and then this pale pale blue green uh you know we can see it up here like in the leaves uh, of course bokeh bokeh all over the place uh some of the bokeh like these images is probably a leafy type of material he's holding up in front of the camera lens popular uh trick that photographers like to do especially with very shallow depth of field lenses uh, lenses that open up to a very wide aperture i should say um and i know he's king of the 50 millimeter lens he likes that sort of you know i think sigma art f what is it f14 i own it i should know what the f stop is uh but just very high quality quality uh, 50 millimeter lenses Nikon has a nice 35 millimeter that stops down pretty low Canon also has some good 35 millimeter glass but also a nice 50 millimeter f1.2 the f1.4 and f1.8s are much cheaper and still pretty good as well especially you know getting an effect like this very possible with like a hundred dollar lens um, but if you want to get really really great stuff get like this super shallow depth of field while still having that amazing sharpness that's where you're looking at that Canon f1.2 uh, or something like the Sigma art f1.4 lens the sigma art f14 lens is an incredible lens uh so th the number one thing is you need to shoot the photos the right way you can't take a cell phone photo and be like oh a little lightroom preset's gonna make this magical it's it's not uh, but we can approximate the color and the overall toning and style of the photos but you still want to shoot photos uh, in this style if you're looking to copy his uh, style or just learn which is what i would recommend try to copy his photos in an effort to learn and develop your own style uh, so bokeh of course particles as well there's just sort of particulate matter floating around Around, right whether it's the sparks leaping off the fire uh, or just the small where was it here like the small bokeh in the city could be sort of particulate here in the glasses it looks like that the little twinkle lights kind of have that vibe there's just a lot of that going on in a lot of his photos uh smoke you know think i for some reason i just get this colored smoke vibe when i look at his uh, photos although you could think foreground bokeh as well neon of course if you've got access to neon it's just fun to photograph very very saturated colors you're going to get from neon a uh, glow of course you can see that in almost all of the photos here uh, he flat he flattens the shadows or lifts the shadows some people call it uh crunching the shadows or crushing the blacks or anything like that uh, when i think of crushing the blacks i think of pumping up contrast this is the opposite of that this is taking the black point and boosting it so there's less black in the image so like the black underside of the bridge is really this pasty charcoal color it gives you kind of this cool flattened effect um and then a lot of times i've noticed sort of the supporting colors get desaturated a little bit so the greens around her while they're shifted from a green to a cyan aqua color yes um her, she appears to be a little bit more saturated than the area around her and that seems to be the case in a lot of the photos like this neon would be a lot more pink uh in real life so things like that uh, are all characteristics that i picked out so with armed with all of that information let's jump over into lightroom and begin the process so i just dragged in a bunch of images from previous shoots and then this image here with the, some greenery it's an unsplashed stock photo I'll throw the link in the bio uh, so you can grab that if you want it. Uh, but we have here just a bunch of photos from past shoots, uh, shoots I did a number of years ago. And I wanted to check out a bunch of different styles. So just dark stuff, stuff that's totally studio lit, but indoor shot, then studio shots, outdoor stuff. Um, but I think in order to really get something that's sort of brand in style, you need to go with photos that are shot in the style that Brandon uses. And that is a lot of dark scenes with bokeh. So he's probably not going to be shooting a lot of stuff like this, where you're just inside standing against a wall of rolls of fabric. And even this photo here, right, this photo 
uh, it, the black the background's kind of plain. I mean, there's nothing necessarily wrong with the photo. It's not maybe the best lit photo and things like that. Uh, but I was learning when I shot this. Uh, but it's not really the style photo he would shoot. So we could apply his color toning to it. But I don't know that it would ever look like a Brandon Woeful style photo. I'm going to right click here on this photo and just clear these settings off of it. I want to use one of these photos here. I actually created a virtual copy. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that here. I'm just going to select this photo and remove it. Uh, but I've got this photo here. You just right click and choose, uh, where is it here? Go ahead. Oh, right there, right in front of my face, create virtual copy. And this allows us to work on sort of a test image. Uh, and we, if we don't like it, we can just quickly go back and revert to the other image. I don't know. It's easy to undo as well, but I just like working on a virtual copy. So we're going to select that. And then we're going to come up here to our develop module. And we have a lot of the characteristics that he has. Now I did have a light out on location. We just have one small light times square, New York, or one of the side streets off of times square. I can't remember. And, uh, just a small soft box, just to throw a, bit, a little bit of light in her face and uh, nothing fancy about it. Let me get rid of my information up there and collapse my presets as well. Um, but we're going to work with this image because I think it has a lot of those characteristics. We have some bokeh in the background. We have a good variation of lights, a lot of colors. Even her outfit has some color in it. So we have a lot we can play with. We're going to begin by opening up basics. And the first thing I want to do because I want to kind of create a preset is I don't want to mess with my color temperature or tint. Well, I, I do want to mess with them. I don't want to save that in the preset because we do want to build our preset from uh, basically the same starting point. And that starting point should be a color corrected image. So this image is actually pretty color correct. I think I'm going to um, just try to kind of correct it a little bit more. And that is make it just slightly more blue, punch it down to 4,900 uh, in terms of the temperature and tint. I'm not going to touch for now. We'll come back maybe and play with tint later. All right. So this is the point from which every image begins. And how do I know every image begins this way? Every image doesn't need to be 4,900, right? Well, no. So if you're working like with this photo here, maybe the correct white balance for this is something like 5,700, right? Maybe this is like, yeah, it's these really warm, rich tones. And it's from this that we want to build that preset. Uh, that's fine because again, as long as you're beginning with a color correct photo, the preset should work close to the same. Now we may need to adjust the temperature a little bit, but at least if we begin with an accurate starting point, uh, it's going to kind of work the same with most images and we can always go and tweak the temperature a little bit afterward if it needs to be adjusted. All right. So a lot of, a lot of talk about it's, it's something that's very theoretical, but it's really important if you want to create a preset. All right. So we're also not going to touch exposure and contrast for right now. Uh, at the very least, we wouldn't save any changes, but what I want to do is cool off the highlights a bit. So I'm going to pull the highlights back, maybe like negative 60. I'm going to boost the shadows probably like plus, uh, I'm sorry, negative 70 and probably boost the shadows like plus 70. I'm working with a raw image. So we have huge latitude here to push and pull. You can see this is already killing off some contrast, kind of flattening the image out, right? We're losing some of that distinction between foreground and background. Here was the image we began with and here's what we've done so far. Uh, and I'm going to kind of do the same with whites here. I'm going to knock the whites back, maybe like, I don't know, negative 50 ish. And then I'm going to boost the blacks. This is also going to serve to kind of flatten out those blacks. Again, look, we're losing so much contrast. Don't worry. We're going to bring some back. In fact, we're going to bring some back right now with the clarity slider. We're going to push that up to about plus 50. And you can see the effect we're getting. It's already kind of starting to have uh, the Brandon Woeful effect, if that's what it's called. I am also going to reduce the vibrance. Um, reducing vibrance is not quite as powerful as reducing saturation. It tends to preserve skin tones a little bit more, which is great. Because remember, we talked about stuff other than your subject and the color in your subject some often seems to be a little desaturated in his photos. All right, so here we go. We've got our basics, I think, uh, in a place where we like them. Let's go to the tone curve real quick and let's boost up our blacks. So we're going to kind of flatten the blacks, but you can see this is really just lifting the black point across the whole image. So we're going to add a point here and we're just going to pull back some of that contrast and then just pull the image back straight along the center point. And maybe we'll flatten off some of the whites too. So if I shut off my tone curve, you can see there's before and there's after. You can see we're just flattening and lifting those blacks across the image. Image looks kind of like a mess right now. Don't worry. We're going to go to the red channel. Let's begin adding some color here. The opposite of red is cyan. So if I pull down on any part of these points, it's going to introduce a bunch of cyan into the image. So I'm going to say, give me a little bit of cyan in the shadows. Let's pull the mid, the mid tones of the image kind of back to normal and let's introduce some cyan up in the whites as well. So something, 
Uh, something kind of like that, maybe. And then let's ignore the green channel. We're going to go to the blue channel. And I'm going to lift a little blue into the shadows, just a little bit, just kind of a little kiss of blue. I'm going to pull the midtones back to normal along that original starting point. Uh, and maybe I'll add a little bit of blue in the highlights, maybe a little bit of yellow. Yeah, maybe just a very touch of yellow in the highlights. Something like that. Again, if we shut off tone curve, there's before, there's after. So we're beginning to add this really flattened color. And if we decide there's too much cyan, which I'm going to be honest, it kind of looks like that's the case right now, or the balance isn't quite right, we'll adjust it later. Let's finish building the effect, and we'll come back to it uh, in a moment. Let's go to our HSL sliders here. And I want to shift to the hue of the red here. I want to make it a little bit more orange. This this is, you may think pink, and, and Brandon does have a lot of pinks, and one of the colors that we did bring up in his image is in fact pink, first color that I associate with his stuff is sort of pink and purple. Uh, but I, I found that orange works better if you shift the red hue, uh, maybe like, let's go more toward the orange. Well, again, we'll see what it looks like. We may end up pushing it back toward the pink. I'm not, I'm not totally set on that. I'm going to push yellow over toward the greens. I'm going to push green more toward aqua, and I may push aqua a little bit more toward blue. Uh, magentas, I may slide back a little bit more toward that pink purple heading into magenta away from the reds. Uh, and then for saturation, we're probably going to desaturate red just a little bit, maybe negative 20 ish. Uh, that's going to again, help us control the amount of saturation that floods into the skin. And then it's just a matter of luminance. So we'll probably brighten orange and yellow a little bit, uh, orange, red, and yellow, I should say. Uh, and maybe aqua a little bit as well. So something like that's probably what we're going to go with. Again, we'll tweak it in a little bit uh, as we finish pulling this together and see what it's looking like. Uh, split toning, we're not going to touch. Detail, this is just your sharpening and noise reduction. That will probably be something you want to do on an image by image basis. We don't want to add that to our preset. Lens correction, uh, also something you're going to you're going to want to do on an image by image basis. I am going to remove chromatic aberration and I'm going to enable profile corrections. You're going to see, because this is kind of a cheaper 50 millimeter lens. This is the Canon 50 millimeter F1.4 I used to shoot this photo. It has kind of some strong vignetting around the edges. So cheaper lenses, the further you stop them down, the closer to wide open you get. Generally speaking, the more vignetting you're going to get. So when we get rid of that vignetting, it really helps just open the image up. Look at what that does to our image. It really, really cleans things up for us. I'm going to turn that on. Again, we're not going to save that as part of the preset. That's going to be something you want to do on an image by image basis. Uh, if the image needs it, if you want it, etc. Close up a lens corrections. I'm going to skip over transform and effects, and we're going to come down here to camera calibration. So here's where we begin changing up some of the color as well. So let's just flood some purple into our shadows. And I'm looking at this. There's just too much green in her skin. Um, so I, I think that's going to be the curves, but let's go ahead and play with our primary colors because we are going to adjust the greens in the image. But so let's not sit on anything too hard. I'm going to boost the red hue, maybe like plus 30. So we're going to put this going to put some orange into our face and I am going to just boost the saturation a tiny little bit, you know, five, between five and 10 for the greens here. I want to move the green away from aqua. I think, yeah, I think I want to move it back away from aqua, maybe like mm, negative 30 ish. And then I'm going to desaturate that just a little bit. So between negative 15, negative 20, I think will work for us. And then I'm going to really push the blues over toward the aqua. So we're going to go like negative 60 and I want to make the blues very saturated. So I'm going to go like plus plus 60 ish maybe on that as well. Um, now I'm looking at this and yes, in fact, I think I do want to go and change the reds to make them more pink. So let's go back to HSL. So HSL, we're going to go hue and we're going to say, yeah, those reds, we actually want them to be more pink. Look at what that's doing. It's helping clean up her face as well. Green, yellow, maybe we can slide yellow back away from aqua a little bit. And then here in the tone curve, we're going to come back to this. And we're just going to get rid of a bunch of the cyan that we pushed into both the shadows and the highlights. I may even push a little bit extra red into the mid-tones uh, just to give the image an overall, just a bit of a pink vibe. Uh, I kind of like that a bit. Let me go back to calibration as well. Push a little bit more magenta into my shadows. Something sort of like that. You're looking to get almost a low contrast pinkish version of the image. Let's boost our shadows up to maybe plus 80 and our blacks, we'll push them up to like plus 60 and we'll knock our highlights down. We'll knock them down to like, you know, negative 80 as well. So again, just reducing the contrast a little bit more. Uh, and something like that I think is going to be pretty accurate for us. So here's the image we started with. Here's what we've got now. Now this is unsharpened and there isn't much bokeh, but I'll show you how to correct that in a second. Let's first save this as a preset. So over here in your presets panel, drop down, say, look, let me go ahead and create a preset. Uh, we'll add it to our user presets and I'm going to call this uh, Woeful. 
I hope I spelled his name correctly. Uh, we'll try this, or we'll name this 01. Now here's what we wanna do. We wanna choose the stuff that we wanna save in our preset. We don't wanna save our white balance because that's gonna be an image by image thing, or at least a photo shoot by photo shoot thing. We don't wanna save the exposure or contrast. We don't need to save the hazing, graduated filters, noise reduction, all that stuff. Uh, we don't need to save sharpening because we didn't do that. Lens correction we've unchecked. Transform we don't need. Effects we don't need. Process version and calibration we're going to leave them on. Color and split tone. Well, we don't need split tone either. Color we're going to leave turned on. And this is everything we need. So we'll go ahead and create the preset. Great. So how do we use this now in other images? Well, I've got another photo of her from the shoot. Very dark, very underexposed. Uh, wasn't, wasn't a great photographer then. Still not a great photographer, but maybe a little bit better than back then. Here's what we do. We look at this and say, all right, um, I want to maybe knock this down to about 5,000 in the temperature department. Uh, I know I need to boost the exposure a little bit. Uh, something maybe like that. Maybe I want to reduce contrast just a touch. And then I could go all the way down to my user preset. I've got Woeful 01. I click it. You see what I've got here. And now I can look at this and say, wow, there's, there's a lot of red. There's a lot of pink. So maybe what I want to do is actually make the image more blue. So by, by changing the color temperature, I change the entire complexion of the way the preset's working. Then I could also go to temperature and tint. Uh, I'm sorry, a tint and temperature, but we're just using the tint slider here and introduce a little bit more magenta. And that's also gonna change the way that the image sort of interprets uh, the, the color effect that I'm placing on it. So something like that might be nice. And we may look at it and say, you know what, I actually want more contrast in there. So I'm gonna use my contrast slider here, boost contrast a little bit. And of course, you can do things like add more clarity if you think you need a little more clarity or uh, put some of that vibrance back in if you think there, there needs to be more vibrance or maybe more importantly for this image, you may say, you know what, the red saturation needs to go down more or it's down too far. So depending on what you need, you can do all that. Now at this point, you could save this image uh, out of a Lightroom. One thing maybe you could do is go in Maybe her face is too pink for your taste, or maybe it's not pink enough. Maybe you want to add another color to her face as well. Some of Brandon's photos, look, if we look uh, like here, she's got a lot of color in her face. Her face is super cooked pink. Her face is very cyan. Her face, now granted, right up against neon and things like that. Uh, but a lot of times faces are very colorful here. It's more natural colored. Uh, but sometimes there's a good mixture of color. She's got blue and pink on her face. So we could do something like that. Using the brush, we're going to crank temperature and maybe even tint up quite a bit and I'll just give it, yeah, I just have this kind of bluish color here that works just fine. And we could go in and just roughly paint on part of her face. That doesn't really, doesn't look all that great. This may be something you want to do more in Photoshop than in Lightroom. But the point is you can go in, maybe crank up the contrast. I don't know. You can go in and play with different colors and things like that right here in Lightroom. I'm going to right click on this image and export the photo as just a large JPEG. We don't, well, you know, let's go full PSD. And then I save the PSD right here into this folder. We'll go ahead and open this up in Photoshop. And I know this is a Lightroom tutorial, but I just want to show you uh, kind of something that Brandon is probably also doing in his photos, and that is adding additional bokeh. So I found Shutterstock has a nice little pack of free bokeh overlay downloads. You can grab, go grab any of them for free. Uh, just run a search for Shutterstock free bokeh. And you could take something like this bit of bokeh here, or maybe we'll go with this one here. Just drag it on top of your photo, and then I'll hit Command or Control T. We would right click, maybe flip it horizontal, bring it over on this side. Maybe we would rotate it a little bit and just get it over kind of where we we want the the new bokeh to be let's say we want to put a bunch of bokeh right out here right then we would just set this to the screen blend mode it's obviously the the wrong color so first we'll mask it so i would just grab a big brush here and just make sure that you know we can't see any edges anything like that go through and just mask away, mask away the stuff we don't want. That's first and foremost. And then we just select the overall layer and we hit Command or Control U for hue saturation. And then just go ahead and slide the hue until you get a color that's got kind of going to match your scene. So something like that. And then I could, you know, additionally mask to just make sure her face is showing and, and looking proper and stuff like that. So it's, you know, it's a quick, quick job of just throwing some bokeh in there, but you can see it can be done really quickly. And of course you could add more color to the side of her face. If you wanted here in Photoshop, you could brighten her face up a little bit if you wanted, but of course it all begins over here in Lightroom with a decent little preset. And we can just try it here on another photo from the same shoot we come down here we go woeful boom and one click we have the image and of course you can say you know make it a little bit more blue uh, expose it a little bit more reduce some more contrast or add additional contrast whatever you feel like the image needs that is my brandon woeful 
Lightroom preset. All right, well, that's it for this one, folks. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe and tick on the notification bell. Uh, and uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, we'll check out this other tutorial I have all about matching color and light for composite images. It's over in Photoshop, not Lightroom, but for photographers, nonetheless, I think you'll really, really enjoy it. It's a popular tutorial. And just a reminder that I love all the people, but I especially love people just like you who sit here and watch this video all the way to the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this one. Again, it got it good. Nathaniel Dodds and I'll catch you in the next one.